Okay, Tov, good morning. Today is Friday, February 19th, Erev Shabbat, Parshat Teruma, and Parshat Zachor. We'll be reading a special reading of Zachor. Please try to make sure you sign up to, to hear that reading. If you're not signed up for, for Minyan already, uh, then you can still sign up for the outdoor Minyan, and, and, or if, even not for the Minyan, you can sign up for the outdoor um, reading of Zachor at 1045, so please go do so. Yesterday was a um, fascinating day. Uh, if you followed uh, some of the NASA news, uh, it, uh, it, it was a culmination of a project that was many, many years in the making and a launch that took place over the summer. Uh, but it was yesterday that the, uh, the Mars rover uh, named Perseverance successfully was landed on Mars. It was, a, it was amazing. It was amazing uh, quickly looking at uh, the, the countless challenges, uh, scientific, and, uh, scientific challenges, mathematical calculations, and then all the unknowns about whether the mechanisms would work. And everyone seems to have worked flawlessly. Uh, and, and by the time uh, the, the, the broadcast was over, uh, the first photos from Mars, from this lander, were already beamed back to Earth. It was, it was really fascinating. And I was trying to figure out, uh, as, I was, as I was watching this, uh, you know, the different locations of the NASA crews that were involved in this. Um, and, and for a little while, I, I got a sense that one of, the control rooms, one of the control rooms we were in looked half dark. And I said, oh, they must be in Houston, where uh, we know there have been uh, major catastrophic power outages and say, well, even NASA. Then it turned out it was, it, was, it was meant to be that way. And I think it was actually from California that, that, uh, that those photos of that control room. But the contrast was just so stark and real. Here, humankind has achieved something um, so unbelievably sophisticated. Uh, when you put your minds to it, what you can accomplish, the, uh, the feats that you can do, uh, you, you can indeed uh, overcome landing this, uh, not the first one, but the more, more sophisticated um, Mars uh, rover uh, on the Mars surface in the exact area where it was intended to, and we can't even keep the electricity power on in parts of the country when a terrible storm comes our way. Who is at fault? Uh, all the ways we can turn the blame, but it was just the irony of it all. I didn't. I, I looked to Houston to see whether that's where they were. That's where they were um, working from because I guess they didn't have their power. What What do we uh, imagine for ourselves when we think about these far reaches, and how does it relate to part of what we read about in the Torah this week? Uh, on the one hand, we uh, we imagine what it means in Mesach Shemayim. If I could just imagine, you know, heading off into the heavens, which no one could really have imagined other than in a fanciful, um, you know, thought until until just recently, um, you know, what it means for us to sort of break the bonds of the earthly world in which we ha inhabit to find go out and explore, as has happened since the 1960s, uh, far beyond our reaches uh, from 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 the landing on the moon to the landing on Mars of these of these special craft and of course many of the uh, the orbiting um, telescopes and the like that are just uh, mind-boggling uh, what it means to reach beyond ourselves and what are we in search of we're in search of of other life that seems to be the case maybe for some people so that we can escape there when we finish destroying this world for me, I have always said, if we destroy this world, I really don't plan on living in a, in a, in a, in a, in a bubbled environment on another planet. It doesn't really matter to me at that point. But uh, we, you know, we're, we're searching out there for, for signs of life. But at the same time, we're searching out there for signs of God. Not in the godless way that the cosmonauts are reported to have said when, when they made their, their, their first... Um, their first uh, reach beyond the Earth's orbit, uh, outside of the Earth's atmosphere, uh, and, and, are, and are said to have, have, have announced that we're up here and, and there is no God up here. 
Uh, every time we, 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 we reach beyond and, and appreciate the expanse of this, uh, this universe that we inhabit, um, those are signs of God. They're not signs of God's absence. But we don't necessarily need to spend our time, nor should we, on some level, thinking about uh, can we find ourselves beyond the, this, this world and do we find God beyond this world? Uh, our work is to try to find God in this world and to experience God and bring God here. Parshat Truma is the, 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 the primary uh, effort to do so. It is the, the, the beginning of a many Parsha described uh, effort uh, to create the Mishkan, and in the Mishkan will be uh, the the Aron, and, and on the Aron and on the Ark will be the Kaporet, the covering on it with the, with the angelic Kruvim figures there, and it's there that God will speak to us. Will God rest there? No, I'll read to you actually how the Ramban chooses to frame it. Very lengthy Ramban at the beginning of the parasha, who is, um, I think, I'm trying to figure out exactly what he's struggling with, but I think uh, not wanting to say that God actually will inhabit this place, because God inhabits every place, but rather it will be the place from which God will speak. Uh, the way it worked in our tradition tells us that the voice of God came down from heaven and then um, focused itself like a laser right above the Kruvim, on top of the Ark, and from there God spoke to Moshe. And from there he spoke to him. Every one of those um, experiences of conversation that, that happened with Moshe was with Moshe alert from heaven. That God, well, we, we, we have to understand, still resides above, whatever that exactly means. But his, the experience of God is to be found here on earth. That's our work. And how do we, how do we uh, indeed uh, have that experience? It will be partially uh, in, in the encounter with God in our holy places. But... This past year has taught us that uh, even when we're not necessarily in our holy places, either because of quarantine or because of construction, that uh, we should be able and must do the work of finding God all around us and bringing God all around us. And the things that we do, the things that we do, the way we encounter one another, what we do for each other, <coughs> excuse me, the mitzvot that we do, uh, that are that are meant to bring godliness here, and so uh, building a mishkan is not just so God can have an address on Earth, which is important. It's the the phone booth. I hope most of you listening still know what a phone booth is, where we can speak to God uh, here on Earth, but thinking beyond. That's true, but rather to sense that God is the signals coming down from God directly to us here. And we're meant to experience God in God's fullness. I've given some shirim this past week where we unpacked the nature of the battle against Amalek. And one of the things that emerged in our classes uh, was this uh, understanding that Amalek represents a denial of God and godliness and godly expectations and godly covenant with anything on, the, on, on earth. Um, Amalek comes following the words, following the words of uh, the Israelites, in a moment of questioning, Hayesh Hashem Bikir Beinu Im Ayin, is God with us or not? And for us, it was a moment of doubt, but for Amalek, it's, it's the position that they take. And Amalek represents, as I've stated, a radical atheism which uh, denies that, that God is, and certainly that God is connected to this world and to any of us. And our eternal battle with Amalek is to fight that and to fight for radical monotheism. To be able to say that God does expect, that God does care, does God, God, God does covenant with us, and um, God helps set a course for us to bring godly behavior into the world. In that sense, the, uh, God doesn't just meet us, but God meets us 
in everything that we do that carries this message forward. May God give us the capacity to, uh, to meet that task. And may we indeed help bring God all around us. We can think to the far reaches of the, of the universe and beyond. And that all that's out there, um, alien and godly, uh, but our work really and our focus ultimately brings us back here. And may we carry out that work well. Have a Shabbat Shalom.